So this is Adobe Illustrator. It's got lots and lots of potential for creating tons of different paths, which they call the individual vector shapes. Each path can have a fill. Each path can have an outline, which they call a stroke. And notice that we are going to start our designs with just black shapes. So we're going to go from something that's very complex, that's going to be the full mural, to your individual logo contributions, which are going to be pretty straightforward. And to do that, I'm going to open up my refined sketch, which has an acknowledgement just roughly sketched in of what shapes are solid and the thickness of the outlines. I'm going to open that up in Illustrator. And I can do that by taking either a JPEG or a PNG and just opening it in Illustrator. And it comes in much like when we bring something into Photoshop. You can go ahead and resize it. You do that with what's called the what I call the large selection tool. It's the black triangle. It looks like the move tool in Photoshop, but it is slightly different. It will move things, but this also gives you the transform box around things and allows you to, in one place, stretch them, distort them. So how do you get it so it doesn't distort? You have to hold down Shift and that will lock its original proportions. But be open to maybe needing to distort it a little bit sometimes to make it fit better. Now, the example I'm doing this semester fits into the overall mural design that your logos will fit into. So I'm trying to do this kind of complicated balance. For the micro, macro micro mural, you'll see the hand here, and you'll see the the microscope there. So I want to make sure it fits within the proportions of this mural because that's the wall size that we have. So when I bring it in, I can also check it. By copying it and pasting it into a new layer on the top here. Because you can add layers kind of as organizational tools. So let's make sure if I lock these proportions holding down shift that this is the right size. So as I finish this off, it makes sense with my design. Yeah, so I want to lock those proportions because that's pretty much what fits. Okay. So I'm going to hold down shift to lock the proportions of my refined sketch. If I hold down shift and option, it will grow from the middle. Size doesn't really matter in Illustrator because it's not based on pixels. So what do I do now? I've brought in my sketch. I'm going to click on Window, just like we had in Photoshop, and I'm going to click on Layers so I can see the layers. And you'll see, different than Photoshop, the layer has a little triangle next to it. So each layer is actually a group, a group of different things. This layer only has my raster image in it. So this is my base sketch layer. And what I do is I double click on it. And I'll get my layer options. And one of my layer options is to dim the image. This is just like taking its opacity down. So I'm going to dim the image to 50%. This is what's called onion skinning. So that you can see the black shapes you create very clearly on top of your sketch. Then, just like in Photoshop, I am going to lock that layer so I can't mess with it again. But unlike Photoshop, there's no padlock that you can see. Instead, there's an eyeball, and then there's an empty square next to the eyeball. That empty square next to the eyeball is where you can lock layers. And that's very helpful in Illustrator so you don't mess with vector shapes you don't want to mess with. 
All right, now I'm going to create a new layer the same way I do in Photoshop with this little plus. Looks like a post-it, and it will build a new layer on top. The other thing that's different in Illustrator is each layer automatically comes with a color. So the one I had before was blue. This one is red. That red is going to show the anchor points and the paths for any vector shapes I make. So I'm going to start really simply using vector shapes the same way we did in Photoshop. They are underneath the T in your tool window here. There's the rectangle. There's the rounded rectangle, which is a nice tool we didn't have in Photoshop. There's the ellipse tool or circle. There's the polygon tool. There's the star tool. There's something called the flare tool, which is new and I have not used. But let's just keep it basic. Let me start with a rectangle and let me just make a shape by dragging. Okay, that shape is going to come in. It looks a lot like your vector shapes in Photoshop, but its properties are here. Right now it has no stroke. See how the stroke has the red line through it? I want to keep it that way. And it's got a fill, but the fill is white. I want to change that fill to solid black. Then I can use the large selection tool, the black triangle arrow, to tilt it, shape it, move it, distort it, and see, do I like that, or do I want to do it with a rounded rectangle? And you could always tool, turn a straight rectangle into a rounded rectangle. So what's the difference? So a rounded rectangle has these corners to it. And I can make those stronger, like that, or I can make them weaker. I could also do this to a regular rectangle. But I just use the large selection tool. I'll click on it. You'll see these little corners. So when I want to select an individual anchor point, I move to the small selection tool. This is what I call it. The, the correct term for it is the direct selection tool, but it's the white arrow. The white arrow lets me pick individual anchor points on the path, like the rounding corners. And I think I will round my corners slightly. Or the actual anchor points, like this, and then I can tug them in different ways. And not only do you have the individual anchor points that you can select with that white arrow tool, the direct selection tool, what I call the small selection tool, but you'll also get these handles. And these handles can be adjusted with that tool to adjust curves between your anchors. And when you don't have handles, that means it's a straight. Right? So I have a handle here because there's a curve on that side, then no handle because it goes straight. No handle here because it's straight, and then a handle on this side for this curve. What if I want to build a curve? Then I can go to the pen tool in the drawer and go to the anchor point tool, and that will convert it to being a curve on both sides. And then I can use the direct selection tool and individually change that curve. So there's a lot, a lot of capability to make shapes within Illustrator. So I'm going to start really simply with a rounded rectangle here. Then I'm going to use my large selection tool to select that. Let's see what that looks like in layers. You'll see I have the rectangle right there. And what I'm going to do is, once it's selected, you can also see it's selected on the side here under Layers. So Layers is a really good navigational tool. Then I can hit Command-C and Command-V, and it will paste, copy and paste, a copy of it. So that's, you don't use Command-J in Illustrator, you just Command-C, Command-V. Gives me another rounded rectangle that I can 
change. What's nice is, is that the exact same angle as my first one. So that's why I'm going to duplicate it. And just like in Photoshop, it's going to give you helpful little like alignment guides. Command C, Command V, I get another rounded rectangle. This is the, the luckiest and easiest way to use Illustrator. If you can knock out a lot of your image or some of your image with just vector shapes, that's very fortunate. Command C, Command V. I'm just using all the large selection tool. And whereas my sketch is going at different angles, this is all going to be very uniform. I'm just tugging it, sometimes using Option to grow it from the middle, sometimes using Shift to lock its proportion. And now we have our first snag. Let me get this to look centered. Let's see. All right. So that's all aligned. So here's our my first snag. Why is it a snag? Because my sketch has a hole cut out in the rectangle, right? So how do I cut a hole out? This is very different than putting a white shape on top. But it starts by putting a white shape on top. <laughs> so, so this is something that you can't do with vector shapes in Photoshop. We can cut a shape out of this vector shape. But it starts with creating, you know, the white shape. So what can I do to do that? I can click on it. In order to see it more clearly, I can go to Window and go to Transparency. Just like you would use Opacity on a layer in Photoshop. I can set that transparency to about 50%. And now I'm going to do a new rounded rectangle. I can make a duplicate of an old one, so CV, and I'm going to not even uh, rotate it. I'm going to keep it at its angle, but I'm going to make it a lot smaller. Not too small, because remember, this is a logo. It's not all about detail. I'm going to center it. So now what do I have? I have one black shape on top of another black shape. I'm going to turn it white just so I can see it clearly. So I'm going to go to where the fill color is, double click on that, and then push as far into the upper left-hand corner as I can for solid white. You can also do it up here. You can also sometimes do it down here. You can also do it with the color selector, just any way that you can get to white. There's still no stroke on it. Now I need to go back to this layer. I'm going to turn its opacity under transparency back to 100%. And you can see that that white is not a hole in the shape. It's a solid white shape on top of my black shape. But I don't want that because this is only going to be black shapes. So now this is what you do. You go to your layers. You identify each path that you're using. These are overlapping paths. So I have the white one, and then I have right underneath it, though they don't need to be right underneath each other, as long as they're overlapping. And I'm going to select both of them by holding down Command and clicking on both of them. So you see how they're both selected? Then I'm going to use a tool, which is the difference between beginners and professionals. And this tool is called the Pathfinder tool. I don't know why it's named that. It's about paths, but you're going to go to Window and find Pathfinder. I already have it open. It's open down here. Pathfinder allows you to merge layers together. 
or merge layer paths together, separate them, cut them out from each other, exclude them, 